What's up guys, just a guy in tech here. My name is Akhil and this is my first YouTube video. The main reason for creating this channel is my passion towards technology. I use various tech products in day-to-day -day life, so I thought why shouldn't I just review these products and let you guys know what I feel about them. If you guys are interested in technology and if you would love to hear about what I have to say about these products, go hit the subscribe button and stay updated. In today's video, we are going to talk about the GoPro Hero 8. The GoPro cameras are action cameras. They're built or developed to sustain rigid conditions and to be mounted in impossible places. Let me just unscrew it up from the mount. So, uh, before I go to the camera, let's see what do we have in the box here. We have the battery, the USB-C charging cable, and the mount. For people who are wondering why the big deal for these cameras, because this small camera can record 4K at 60 frames per second when mounted onto your head or on a car or while you're surfing or while you're trekking. So before I put the battery inside, to make this video much simpler, I'll divide this video into two parts. First, design, and the next, software. So let's talk about the design. When coming to the design, and if I compare it to the previous generation Hero 7 black camera, the Hero 7 was much bulkier compared to the Hero 8. That's because the Hero 8 doesn't have the detachable lens anymore. This lens is built into the product itself, so if you break it, you have to ship the whole product back and get it repaired. Let's see what else do we have new here. The mount. The mount is built into the product too just like the lens, and it's no more that we have to use a case like this, where the mount was put into the case. So that's a very good thing that the GoPro has done for the Edo 8. And the microphone, the microphone just below the lens is a new microphone that's been added to the Hero 8. This microphone should be very useful for people who vlog because it's directly a friend-facing lens so it gives you a much clearer audio when you're recording a vlog. Let's see if there's any other difference that I can see here. The battery slot holder has been moved towards the side and it's not in the bottom anymore. It also houses the memory card slot place and the USB-C charging port. So I'll just put in the battery before we go into the software. So then we can talk about the software. So that's it pretty much on the hardware part of it. There are no other big differences between the hardware when compared to the Hero 7. It looks kind of small and polished. It's definitely, definitely not a big redesign that we can tell about the Hero 8, but it looks cool. So now coming to the software, let me just turn it on. Mm. So, as soon as I turn it on, I have these presets that I can see in the video mode. So, uh, I'll just start off with the video mode and then we can go on to the photo mode and the time lapse mode. So, in the video mode, I see these presets called standard, activity, slow mo, and cinematic. These presets, according to GoPro, are for people who do not know which resolution, which aspect ratio, or which stabilization to use when they are shooting videos. Everyone is not an expert, so GoPro is just helping out a newbie there. That's a good thing. The other good part about these presets is, these presets can be customized up to 10 different types. So you can directly assign a particular mode, say adventure or cycling mode, that you want to shoot only in 4K at this particular stabilization, you can directly set it up so you don't need to set it up again and again. That's a very good thing. The main thing when I can talk, when I talk about the video is, it has to be about the hyper smooth stabilization that the GoPro had for the Hero 7. It had hyper smooth 1.0 for the Hero 7, and now we have the 2.0. The big difference that we can see is. The 1.0 was not available in every mode of the Hero 7, but the 2.0 is available in every mode at every aspect ratio. What else is new in the video mode is, we have a letter symbol on the top bottom left of the camera, 
And this letter symbol is just a slider that can help you change between the field of use. That's between narrow, linear, wide, and super view. So we have four different angles to shoot videos in. Now, there's also something called as Hypersmooth 2.0 plus Boost. This is a much bigger stabilization compared to the Hypersmooth 2.0 according to GoPro. But unfortunately, this is not available in every mode or every aspect ratio. You do not have Hypersmooth 2.0 plus Boost in 4K 60 frames per second. So, that's an advantage but also a disadvantage. That's all in the video section of the GoPro Hero 8. Moving on to the photo mode. Like previously, it also has a night mode, a raw photo, super photo, HDR, a burst. What's new here is we have live burst. For people who want to know what live burst is, live burst is nothing but the live photos in iOS. So when you enable live burst, what happens is it automatically records back in the buffer. So when you press the button, it captures that particular moment, but it also records 1.5 seconds before you hit the button and 1.5 seconds after you hit the button. So you, have, you can choose between 90 different photos or it can be saved as a three second video in your gallery. So that's a nice cool thing done by GoPro. Next, moving on to the time-lapse video. What's new in the time-lapse is we have something known as Time Warp 2.0 in the GoPro. That's nothing but a hyperlapse in common terms. A hyperlapse is a moving time-lapse video and what GoPro says is they have added much better stabilization for the Time Warp. So that's a very good thing. Let's see what else is new here. We have 4K, auto, wide, okay. So we can set the speed to auto, which we could not do previously in the GoPro Hero 7. What this means is now GoPro knows what speed it should record the video in when you're shooting a time-lapse or a hyperlapse based on the content. So you do not need to fix or say shoot at 15x speed, 10x speed or 5x speed. So this is a welcome change. That's it at the first glance that I can tell you about the GoPro Hero 8. If I had to add on something about the GoPro Hero 8, I could clearly say there's something known as mods that are gonna be releasing this holiday season for the GoPro Hero 8. These are accessories that can be added to the Hero 8. Basically these accessories are a medium mod, a light mod, and uh, what else was there? A mic mod? Yeah. So these mods can be added to the GoPro Hero 8 and it can be used to take professional videos. That's it about the GoPro Hero 8. The GoPro Hero 8 sells for $399 here in the United States. And the GoPro Hero 7 has been reduced down to $329. So if you personally ask me if I have to shift do I have to shift between the Hero 7 and the Hero 8? What I would tell you guys is, if you're happy with the stabilization in Hero 7, you guys do not need to shift to the Hero 8 because there's no big UI difference, there's no big design difference. If you do not like the mount uh, in the Hero 7, then it's up to you if you want to go to the Hero 8. But the step, if it comes down to the stabilization, it's not much of a big deal. So, it all depends on you. And that's it guys, that's my take on the GoPro Hero 8. So thank you guys for watching this video. This is my very first video so there may have been a few mistakes, do pardon me for that. I'm very new to this, I'll constantly try improving my videos and giving you the best possible content. Thank you, bye bye.